Welcome back into the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. This is our special initial 53-man roster mm. edition of the Falcons Audible. I'm Derek Rackley. That's DJ Shockley, Dave Archer. Uh, yes, we did do a quick chair switch, okay? This is not your eyes playing tricks on you. We got Archer right here in the middle of, a, you know, <laughs> just saying. Just keep it clean, okay? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Archer's in the middle. That's all I'm saying. Crazy. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we're here. Um, Good to be here, too. Yeah. Before we get into the X's and O's, the nuts and bolts of the initial 53-man roster, just to let you all know that our discussion as we have it is as the roster as we have it right now. Reason why we say that is because within the next two or three hours, or maybe the next 12 hours, or whenever it is that you end up taking in this podcast, there could be more transactions that are made. Maybe we talk about a guy that ends up not being on the roster. I don't know. But just remember, we are discussing this as the 53-man roster as we see it right now. Okay? Uh, here's what we're going to discuss real quickly on the podcast. We're going to talk about the roster. We're going to talk about the continued growth with the guys that we have right now. And then maybe... We'll give you a little explanation why we do call it the initial 53-man roster. Am I missing something? It's Arch, no, man. Just, Arch is, is what are you talking about? Just sitting here. I like I, I'm you know, introducing all the topics, but I don't want to miss out on the fun. <laughs> no, you keep us on. Yeah, you, 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 you do you great keep rolling through all the right. topics. Arch are like 14. What topics we're going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me turn things over to the teenagers here, <laughs> and I want to get their thoughts on the roster. Um, since I normally start with Arch in this chair, <laughs> we're going to start with a new. A new face. Yeah. Hi, DJ. Yeah. Hey. In a new chair. Hey. I want you to describe My this initial 53-man roster in just three words. You can explain it, but the first part has to be three words. Does it have to be three words? I mean, it depends on how you use – my so first word it can go. be here maybe four go. words. It's not maybe that difficult. It can be together, but it has to go with what I want to say. Okay. Okay. All right. So my phrase is set up to succeed. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Set up to succeed. Okay, so and it's whether or not set up is one word. Exactly. See? Or hyphenated. That's why I said okay. there's a little controversy okay. there. Expand. So it could work, right? Okay, you know? set up to I succeed. Th- yeah, <laughs> I, I, I say this because I think of the depth – the additions that you added, the way it's constructed, this is a roster that's set up to succeed with all the weapons you have on offense, the guys you have around your quarterback, the way you drafted, defensively the guys you brought in to add to this team. What you've done up front defensively is set up to succeed. Ryan Nielsen, you brought him in. He's a guy that has been succeeding. He's got guys who you think can fill those voids. So I think the roster is set up right now, as we talked about, to succeed, as we know, things could change. But I think right now, this place, this roster's in a good spot. Okay. That's Arch, pretty good. do you got three words? Well, or? I had three for shock, and it's a combination. Get out the weight room. You know I mean? How swollen is that's this That's way more than three words right there. Get out. Get out. That was one Rat. word. One word. <laughs> no, no, one oh, word. that's get one out. word? That's a combination. <laughs> what about so weight room? So, so you're done in the league, so get out yeah. the weight room, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, Arch, uh, your three words <laughs> for this initial 53-man roster. Well, I'm not going to use yours because yours was good last year. Okay. You had a good one last okay. year, and I'm going to leave that for you. Um, it's it's just along the lines of here we go, let's go, things things of that mm-hmm. nature. Um, let's is just one word, by the way. It's a combination, a contraction. Okay. I'm I didn't know it was going to be a lot of grammar and stuff involved. <laughs> Can we get the football? <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> no, here we go. I mean, it, it, we've been waiting for this. Thank God preseason is over with because that <laughs> Thursday game was brutal to watch. <laughs> but we now have, as you said, the initial 53. So here we go. Now let's roll. All right, let's roll with it. I've got three words. I've got one that might be somewhat made up, but depends on what oh, part of the country you're oh, from. It might be it might be normal vocabulary, okay? Mine is so darn multiple. Darn. Yeah. That ain't in dictionary. See, that's what I said. <laughs> like, it's not a really a word. I like that, though. I like but depending it, though. on what part of the country you're from, like, people might just say, like, they might just let darn, like, yeah. roll off the tongue. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, no yeah. big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so darn multiple, right? I mean, just think about the running back room. Yeah, we drafted a running back in the first round that may end up playing as much slot in wide receiver as he does running back. And we had a running back that was pretty good for us the past couple of years in Cordero Patterson, who might actually play more wide receiver this year. But he might play running back. And we have a Mm -hmm. tight end that was one of the most gifted tight ends that might play more wide receiver this year. So 
again, that's why I'm saying it's so multiple because these guys, the position that sits next to their name on the roster may not be traditionally where they line up on Sundays uh, when we see Atlanta Falcons, especially offensively uh, as they start the regular season. So, DJ, let me come back to you. We got a chance to see the names, right? Initial. Initial 53-man roster. Again, there might be some moves, but let's go into a little bit deeper as far as your thoughts about what this team is going to look like when they take the field against the Carolina Panthers. You know, I, I think it's a team that has the ability to play with anybody in this league. And you look around this roster, you look around the way it's constructed offensively, and you say, okay, this is a team that can score a bunch of points. You think about the game where the second game, they got a chance, the ones got a chance to play. And you had – we talked about it last time, you know, two, three, four penalties on one drive, and you still were able to overcome those issues. Just think about if you don't have those issues and you have a full complement of the players that are going to be in there. In that game, we didn't have CP. So that's a whole nother dynamic to this offense that brings a defensive coordinator to his knees every single week when he has to think about where is this guy going to line up, okay? Yeah. Where is that guy going to start? And then ultimately, as we know, Arthur Smith, where he starts is definitely not where he's going to end. There's a lot of motion. There's shifts. And then you got a quarterback who, for one, we know will take care of the football, is a guy who's mentally strong and is a winner from college. And we saw the, the, the production that he had last year as he got better in four games. This is an offense, I believe, that in due time, Arthur Smith has already kind of alluded to the fact that he is itching at the opportunity to get these guys – in a game where he can use all these different weapons and tools. Defensively, I'm most excited about watching the front seven. I'm most excited of watching how this team will get after opposing teams. And whether it's with blitzes or whether it's, you know, just up front beating people, the depth up front I think is going to be so fun to watch. Watching Caden Ellis, watching Troy Anderson next to each other, watching the physicality of Anya Mata, Bud Dupree, Calais being move inside, outside, you know, adding, you know, obviously Grady's one of those big time players in there. Still got Lorenzo Carter. You got, you know, Malone come along. You, you got AK a part of it. I mean, there's so many guys in that front seven that you are excited to watch and see how this defense continues to get better. Because over the years, we've seen it. Our offense has scored points. We've been able to move the football. Whether you have issues once you got in the red zone, that's a whole other issue from last year. But you've been able to move the football. We know offensively you can do that. Defensively, though, we know getting to the quarterback has been the biggest issue. And coming into this season, you say, Woo, look at these dudes on this roster. Look at these dudes that can actually get after people. They have shown they can do it. And now you got a guy, Ryan Nielsen, who is – one of the most integral and detailed guys when it comes to it. And I've seen a couple mic'd up where he's talking to Calais. He's talking to all these defensive guys about things that they can do better. And I'm so excited to see this come to fruition in game one, week one, against Carolina, where you got a young rookie quarterback who, you know, everybody says looks good in the preseason, but there are going to be a bunch of wrinkles. There are going to be a lot of things that he throws at this rookie quarterback that's going to have him kind of on his heels. And I'm excited to see him go. You, you mentioned wrinkles. You should drink, man. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate really that. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned wrinkles. I can't help but going back to the offensive side of the ball. And what I and you were talking about shifts and motions. Where they start up is not going to be where they line up. And I was going to go back to my three words of so darn multiple. And let me ask you this question, Arch. Let's just darn. say the opening package for Atlanta against Carolina is Kyle Pitts, John U. Smith. Mm. It's 22 personnel. It's Algier. And Bijan Robinson, you got Drake London at wide receiver. Mm. Okay, let's just say those guys line up in a in a traditional twenty two. Still got Max in over there, six five two. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he's on the sideline, yeah. right? But then all of a sudden, <laughs> you get a shift, and Bijan goes out to the slot. Kyle moves out to the wide receiver. What personnel do you put up? What personnel is a defensive corner? Because you know you got to get your personnel in before they come out of the huddle. So what I what I'm saying is they're so multiple. Because how do you match up against that? You got four linebackers on the field. And now you got a linebacker covering Kyle Pitts and Bijan Robinson mm. split out, mm. right? These are the kind of quick decisions that defenses are going to have to make. Are we going to treat Bijan and Tyler Algier as both running backs? Or when Bijan comes in, is he a wide receiver? Is Kyle Pitts a wide receiver? Are we going to match him up with a safety or a linebacker? So these are the things where I think they can get creative and find mismatches and get – and then Desmond Ritter just looks and says, oh, I got Bijan with a linebacker. I like that matchup right there. 
Yeah, I think that that will be where well, you're not going to know in the opening snap because Carolina hasn't seen any of this stuff. Yeah. So Carolina is going to counter with 22 personnel. They're going to counter base. Yeah. If they're in a 3 4, or 4 3, whatever it is, then they'll counter with their base. Now, once they get touched one time because it didn't work out for them, I think you're going to see teams begin to mirror uh, with Bijan and, and, and Tyler in the game at the same time. Teams are going to begin to counter that with nickel. Yeah. They're going to put nickel on the field. And because Bijan, you're not looking for Bijan to block anybody. So, um, and you got two pass catching tight ends. Now, Johnny will maybe a little bit better in, in the run game. Kyle emerging as a run game blocker. Um, so, I think teams will counter with nickel because they know that more often than not, if Tyler, and this is where you got to self scout. Yeah. If Tyler and Bijan are in the backfield together, and then all of a sudden we get a shift. More often than not, Tyler's going to stay as that single back in the backfield. Right. Bijan's going to bounce to the slot or yep. out to the numbers. Yep. I've got to have a defensive back in the game to yep. cover him. Yep. So I think the teams will begin to adjust to that. But what you're saying has a lot of merit to it. It doesn't boil down to Sunday. What it boils down to is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, when I'm trying to prepare for the multiplicity that this offense can put on the field. I've got – you guys know as well as I do – there's a million calls. I've got personnel groups that are coming in. All of a sudden, they're looking at the sideline. Here comes Bijan and Tyler. Yeah. And there's two tight ends. He's calling for a certain group. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, at the last second, Bijan runs out, and in comes Cordero, Cordero Hodge, or in comes CP. Yeah. And boom, I'm, I'm calling for another group. But that preparation all has to take place in a minimal amount of hours, Wednesday through Friday, to get ready for Sunday. And that just lends itself to screw ups. Wrong guys are on the field. I get pinned with the wrong people. You know, all of a sudden, that people, the people that I thought could defend that, aren't good enough to defend mm -hmm. it. Yep. You know, so there's a lot of things that could create problems. And, and, and a great example of that was it didn't it didn't happen, but there was a good chance of it. Falcons had a big play in that second preseason game, and they tried to go fast. And you get caught, or one guy doesn't know where he's supposed to be, and Bijan's out there wide open, and he walks into the end zone. But ultimately, it comes back, or whatever the case is, when they're trying to, you know, with Drake. So it was those kind of instances. I think are going to be so mm. interesting to watch. And if fans, if you ever watch a game, personnel for the offense goes in, and on the other side, there's a defensive coach that's always just sitting there waiting. He's looking. He's waiting to see who's coming in, and then he makes the call. Then those guys come sprint on. Then they got to make the checks and calls, and they got to be able to think fast enough to say, okay, these guys are moving. There's a lot of moving pieces, like Arch just mentioned, that a defense has to go through within a snap. Just imagine doing that for 60, 70 plays a game yeah. and asking those guys not to have one mistake or two mistakes within those particular series of drives. You're going to find some instances where you can create those advantages for you just by – the way you rotate. And one of the things defensive coordinators will do to counter all the personnel groups is you might have three or four calls or different personnel Open coming in a match. What you're going to get is we explode out of a out of a, a full set with two backs in the backfield, two tight ends to four wides essentially, is you're going to get base calls. They're going to start calling base, 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 which yep. means they're going to go to zone coverage, which is a vanilla look for, for Desmond Ritter yep. to go through. And now all of a sudden, Des can pick them apart. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to give up the big play. And now all of a sudden, you're punching the ball down the field. So it's going to be a problem now for defenses to try to counter both personnel-wise and call-wise to match the people. Yeah, and, and let me say this. like I don't want to take anything away from the other 31 teams and specifically defensive coaches in the NFL. The Falcons are not the first team to have this type of flexibility right. in the NFL, right? Defensive coaches in the league are very good. They're going to be able to have a plan to match up with this. I'm just saying this is the first time in a while that Atlanta's had this much flexibility offensively to be able to put defenses in binds. But, guys, I can't help but think that the, the elephant in the room here still is DJ – you have to have a quarterback that takes advantage of what the defense gives. So the kind of even though we saw some good things on the one drive <coughs> against Cincinnati from Desmond Ritter, the the elephant in the room here still is De Desmond Ritter has got to be efficient and effective with the football and not turn it over and help them move this offense down the field. That's still something that we don't really have a grasp of yet. Is yeah. that true? Is that fair? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think. We all have an opinion on Dez from watching him his past four, four games, watching him in college, watching him out here at training camp. And we have an opinion and we feel like, yeah, we think he can go out and do it. But until it happens, because think about those last four games, he didn't play with Kyle. He didn't play with a Bijan. He hasn't played with these guys in live action where it really matters. So you don't know how he's going to respond. 
how he's going to go out and play. But the thing that I do know is I listen to the guys around him. I've heard defensive guys talk about him. Big reason Calais Campbell came here because he sat down with Terry Fontenot and they went down and him and Arthur Smith, they looked at film of Dez. And he said, that's a guy who I know can get it done. Here's a guy that I know can play at this level and I know we have a quarterback. I listened to Logan Woodside. I listened to Taylor Heineke talk about the preparation he puts in on a daily. You, you hear Drake London talk about the things that he's done this offseason to prepare himself. You hear offensive linemen like Chris Lindstrom talk about the confidence he has when he walks into the huddle. I listen to the guys around him that, that tells you this guy is ready for that moment. Now, you mentioned, yeah, he got to go out and execute. He got to prove it. But I think the biggest thing is the guys around him believe that he is capable of doing it. And to me, that means more than anything. And, Arch, it's, it's, it's almost like – Again, the first time in maybe a little while where the quarterback doesn't have to do everything here because there are a lot of playmakers surrounding him, right? Like, I felt like there were times when we were waiting for Matt Ryan to kind of do everything for this offense, right? Like, Matt, just pick the defense apart. Make somebody look good, whereas now – it feels like this offense, this personnel grouping, has the ability to take advantage of defenses because they have a size mismatch, because they have a – maybe it's a, a mismatch as far as personnel goes, or maybe it's just skill. Is that fair, too, that now Desmond doesn't necessarily have to be perfect because these guys are going to get themselves open, whether it's because of the way they run routes or the way they position their body? Because you got three wide receivers slash tight ends that are just such – big bodies yeah I, I think that theoretically that's that's certainly the case rack I think that now the, we're talking about Des having to play these other guys got to step up and do yep. exactly what you're talking yep. about I'm doing they got to create opportunities for create separation for Des to get the ball in there or play basketball and screen a guy off and make make certain catches for him they're gonna have to make those kind of plays you mentioned um it's been a while since we've had this kind of weaponry on the offensive side of the ball you got to go back to probably 17 yep. 16 17 last time this team was in, yep. in the playoffs the difference on this team than those teams is you've got a quarterback that can move yep. mm -hmm. okay and, and no offense to matt ryan phenomenal pa passer best pa best quarterback we've ever had in this franchise yep. but he wasn't going anywhere right? <laughs> no doubt. now all right. of a sudden you spread out and you try to spread out and match in those situations, you felt like you could rush the passer for the most part and kind of keep him pinned in. Yep. If you dedicate a lot of resources perimeter-wise to these weapons and you don't have somebody mirroring this guy in the backfield, Dez is going to have 50, 60, 70 yards rushing in a yep. game and break your back. Yep. We saw a little bit in that one drive yeah. in that yeah. second game where he was able to move in the pocket. Dave Ragone's done an unbelievable job of working with him on his techniques. I sit and watch this. I go intently to sit down there and watch Dave Ragone working with him on keeping his shoulders square, keeping him in a throwing position where as he approaches the line of scrimmage to threaten and guys begin to step to take him away, he can throw in behind. You mentioned the B. John Robinson catch along the sidelines. That was one of those. Got called back because because, you know, it was Zach Taylor challenged the, the play to Drake London. That was a walk-in touchdown yep. because they committed to him and he bumped it outside. Those are parts, those are the elements that are the impromptu parts that he brings to the table that's going to be his to own. And, and I don't think people are factoring that in. They're talking about, oh, him distributing the ball and getting to everybody. Wait a minute, the dude's a phenomenal athlete. Had 30 rushing touchdowns in college at Cincinnati, he's going to be ready to go as an 11th athlete on the field. Here's uh, Rank, one more thing I yeah, want to add yeah. to it is the one guy who believes in him the most is the guy who's called in the place. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it this offseason. There was an opportunity to go out and get any other quarterback that you possibly wanted with the other guys that's on the market. You had a chance in this draft to go draft another quarterback. But the man who's calling the plays, the guy who's seen him all year in practice last year, who we don't get to see a lot of. Arch, you may see him in practice, see all that kind of stuff, but we don't get the chance to sit down and watch what happens inside of practice yep. and what he's doing to prove that he's capable of this. But the guy who's calling the plays, Arthur Smith, said Desmond Ritter is our guy and believes he gives us the best chance to win ball games. Yep. And for me, that's the best confidence. That's the best thing you can have is – the head coach and the play caller saying this guy with everything around him is the best guy for us. So who am I to question if he can get it done, if he not? I mean, of course, you have an opinion, but the head man believes he can. Exactly. Um, and I made this comment about B. John Robinson with the Falcons selecting him in the first round. And it's the same point you're talking about with Desmond Ritter. It doesn't matter what you think. 
it doesn't matter what we think. The coaching staff and the personnel department get more time no with all of these players than any of us could ever imagine. They know their makeup. They know their strengths, weaknesses, capabilities a whole lot better than we did. And obviously, the Falcons saw something to Bijan Robinson at number eight that said, that is our guy. And to your point, they're saying the same thing about Desmond Ritter. We could go out, we get somebody, we could trade for Trey Lance. <laughs> they didn't do that. <laughs> right. We got our guy. All yeah. right. Before we, I feel like we've exhausted the offense, Dave. Let's talk about defense real quick. Again, you've been around for a while. I want you to, and what I say by you've seen this roster yeah, transform. Yeah. And it's not like Atlanta hasn't had good players. I mean, I think about the Deion Jones of the world. Ricardo Allen was very successful here. Keanu Neal, you could go down the list, right? Where do you feel like this defense stacks up in star power and playmaking ability compared to kind of what we've had previously? Obviously, there's some known names here. Calais Campbell jumps to, jumps to the forefront. A.J. Terrell has made a name for himself at the corner spot. I think Jesse Bates is a guy that steps up and becomes one of those guys that, oh, I don't know who that guy is. He was a star with Cincinnati in their defense. Like Grady Jarrett has become – his own entity. You shall not pass. He's yeah. done that. A great, <laughs> he's done a great job of that. I think we um, need it like game time. Yeah, well, arch. we're, we're yeah. gonna save it for game time. Okay, okay, okay. Got another week. Hold on, guys. Yeah. Hold on. Dang. So, but I think there's there's some known commodities that guys have done it. Shock talk a little bit about this. We've got guys on the defensive side of the ball. You go, wait a minute. I know that guy. I remember that guy doing this, that, or the other for somebody yeah. else. Now yeah. you got to bring it together, and that's certainly Ryan Nielsen's goal is to bring all these guys together. Um, but defensively, you had talked earlier about. You know, what is it you're looking forward to? What is it that makes you excited for the season? And I agree with the offensive side of the ball, and we talk a lot about the offensive side of the football. I think the thing that I am most excited about is to watch what Shock talked a little bit about is the physicality of this is going to be a street fight with big dudes yeah. every <laughs> weekend. It was one of the goals that Arthur Smith had when he got here is he wanted people to feel Atlanta the next day, yeah. the next day after that. Yeah. With the run game offensively, they've been able to do that. Yep. Number three in the league, 160 yards a game. Believe me, defenses are feeling this offense physically the day and the day after the yep. game. Now you need the other side of the ball to bring that to the table too. And I think the cast of characters they have defensively with the experience and the physicality, the size, they're going to be able to get people to feel that on yeah. game day and days after that yeah. that are going to impact them to where maybe these close games that Atlanta's losing now, now all of a sudden you're winning on third down on defense. There's an extra two or three series for Desmond Ritter on that side of the football. You're, you're stopping the run game. You're getting after the passer. Those things begin to equate, and those things are, are what I'm most excited about. I think the offense is going to play. we got to score, as Shock said. But I think defensively, the physicality and street fight that you're going to feel this team, it's coming. We never, we'll never hear it, but like – we need a, a guard from another team to go to his head coach and be like, hey, I, I need a day off because Anya Mata was just nonstop. Right? All you got to do is look on the list of guys <laughs> that practiced on a Wednesday right. the week after. <laughs> if they've got four or five guys that didn't practice. Now, that doesn't do any – it's got to equate to game day too. You know, it can't be, hey, well, we pounded Carolina. They had, they had four guys that didn't practice on Wednesday the following week. Well, that doesn't do anything for us now. Right. <laughs> but if they can feel it in the third and fourth quarter – then that's going to equate to wins, close wins, because this team struggled in close games. Um, we, need to, we need to feel that each and every week where you get that entity that it comes to life in the third and fourth quarter. All right, final question for you, Shock. We talked a lot about front seven, D-line, linebackers. Give me your take. Give me your hot take on this defensive back group. Obviously, Jesse Bates was kind of the, the off-season stealer as far as news goes, but they bring in guys like Okuda, obviously going to be banged up a little bit to start the season. But where do you feel like this defensive back group is? Because getting off of the field on third down is extremely important. That's not just the DBs, but you get a deflection, you get an interception, you get some, some great tight coverage. That's one of the best ways to get off the field on third down. How do you feel this group stacks up right now? You you know what, uh, uh, this was the group that when I look at the entirety of the defense and there's really one question mark for me, and it's obviously when Okuda comes back, then that may answer that question. But right now, is that guy opposite of A.J. Terrell, can he hold up? Mm -hmm. And that's a real question for me. Like, yep. we got dudes there that can do it. Yep. We got names. You, yep. I mean, you got huge. We brought in Clark Phillips. D. Alford had a good preseason. Uh, you flower stepped in for Akuda when he's there, yep. but 
do we know when these guys get in the game, can they actually hold up? Yep. And that's the, the only question mark I have. And that's not a, a shot at those guys. Maybe they come out and, you know, one of them becomes a pro bowler this year or, you know, steps in and plays well to, to Jeff comes back. But that one position along with, okay, who solidifies the nickel spot? We saw Alfred play well. We've seen Hughes. We've seen Clark Phillips be a gnat on the inside as well. Those two spots, because we know in this league that second and third or the third and fourth defensive back, you're on the field a lot. Yeah. And you got to hold up in the run game. You got to hold up in the pass game. And a lot of teams in this division and in this league, they got two, three good receivers. So you got to have other guys that can hold up. Is that guy. Can that guy hold up, I should say, until Jeff comes back is a well, question mark for me. And let's be honest. Do we know if Jeff's going to be able to hold up? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. Know, let's, let's be real here. Yeah, he's he's trying to get a reboot in his career. True. And obviously got derailed because of the ankle injury and hasn't been able to practice at full speed for a while now. So I think that's a great question in that it probably equates to whoever you put in opposite yeah. the corner spot yeah, at A.J. Yeah, because because I think it's a great point. You mentioned known commodities, right? So an offensive coordinator and a quarterback on an opposing team is going to say A.J. Terrell is a known commodity. Jesse Bates is a known commodity. The other side, question mark. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to try him out True. early on in the game. They're going to find a way to scheme or to throw the ball in the direction of whoever's going to be playing opposite A.J. Terrell. And then, just like you said, it's on it's on their shoulders to make plays. And then when you decide that you make plays and now we have basically a balance shut down on each side, then now that shifts the power back to the defense. But we won't know that right. until we get out in week one. So, yes, there is some pressure. But guess what? That's the life of playing in the NFL, <laughs> number one. Number two, that's the life of playing out in the corner position. No right, doubt. fellas? No doubt. All right. So that's going to kind of wrap it up uh, for our initial 53-man roster. And as we mentioned, this is going to be a fluid process as players clear waivers, as Somebody ends up getting released and maybe Atlanta's coaching staff and scouting department falls in love or says that that person right there would fit what we feel like maybe is still a hole. So there still might be some movement going on with this roster, but we kind of did a pretty good breakdown as far as the position groups and the players that we have again as of the recording today. Looking forward to getting into game week. That's yeah. only a few days away. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Uh, feel free to leave your comments. Uh, anything that we missed out on on the 53-man roster, any players that we feel like you feel like we need to expand on, let us know. Maybe we'll touch on yeah, it a little bit just, next week just, as we just, get ready for week one. Just tag Arch. Everybody yeah, tag there. Arch, yeah. but, but keep it clean. All right. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on the Falcons <laughs> Audible presented by AT&T. <laughs> As long as um, the two teenagers don't get fired, <laughs> we will be back next week to break down Falcons for game week. Thanks so much curl, for joining us. How many us. curls did you do before the show? <laughs> <laughs>